but as we said, it's a great pleasure now to have uh, Vivian Vandel. Uh, um, he's a PhD student from uh, Atos Quantum Computing and also uh, in RIA. He's actually a PhD student of uh, Simon, who will be the third speaker of uh, this session. And uh, Vivian will tell us about uh, optimal Adamar gates count for uh, Clifford plus TG synthesis of poly uh, rotation sequences. And so thank you very much for being here today. And uh, the floor is all yours. Thank you. So this is joint work with uh, Simon Martial, Simon Perdri, who is going to give a talk uh, just after me, and Christophe Vuillot. And first, I'm going to explain why we want to optimize the number of Hadamard gates uh, in our circuits. OK, so if we have a Clifford plus T circuit, generally, what we want to do is to optimize the number of T gates because the T gates are typically more expensive to implement than the Clifford gates. However, it has been shown that reducing the number of Hadamard gates can help with the optimization of the number of T gates. And also, the number of T gates in a Clifford plus T circuit can be optimized so that it is upper bounded by n plus 1 times n plus 2h divided by 2 plus 1, where n is the number of qubits and H is the number of internal Hadamard gates. And a Hadamard gate is said to be internal if it is in between the first and the last T gates of the circuit. So if we lower the number of internal Hadamard gates, then this upper bound will be lower, and we can expect better optimization in the number of T gates. And also, some t count optimizers are using a measurement-based gadget to substitute the internal Hadamard gates in the circuit and to better optimize the number of T gates in the circuit. So here, these two circuits are equivalent. But in the second circuit, we don't have any Hadamard gates. Instead, we have a control Z gate and a measurement. But the problem with this method is that we need one ancillary qubit for each internal Hadamard, Hadamard gate that is gadgetized. And so we want to minimize the number of internal Hadamard gates to minimize the number of ancillary qubits that are required to perform this procedure. And so a Pauli rotation is defined as follows for an angle theta and some Pauli operator P. And for example, the T gate is a pi over 4 Pauli Z rotation. And here we have an example of a Clifford plus RZ circuit. And because the angles don't really matter for the formulation of our problem, uh, I will just uh, draw the poly rotations by using green boxes like that uh, with the poly matrix inside the box. And a poly rotation can be on multiple qubits. So here we have z, y, x. And this is a, an example of uh, implementation for this poly rotation. And of course, there exist multiple ways to implement a given poly rotation. And what we will want to do is to implement our poly rotations uh, with a minimal number of Hadamard gates. Right. And because Clifford gates are mapping poly operators to other poly operators, we can show that every Clifford plus RZ circuit can be represented by a sequence of poly rotations followed by some Clifford circuit. So here, for example, what we can do is take the last synod gate of the circuit and pull, pull it through the last poly rotation. And this will modify our last poly rotation. We can do the same thing for the two Hadamard gates here. And then we take the synod gate and we propagate it to the end of the circuit. And each time we do that, we update our sequence of poly rotations. And if we do that for all the Clifford gates of the circuit, then we obtain this sequence of poly rotations followed by this Clifford circuit. And so for the moment, we will just ignore this final Clifford operator. And we will try to implement this sequence of poly rotations with an optimal number of Hadamard gates. So what I mean by implementing a sequence of poly rotations is inserting some Clifford gates in the circuit so that each poly rotation is reduced to exactly one poly Z element. 
So here, for example, if we want to implement this sequence of parallel rotations, then we insert some Clifford gates here in the circuit so that each, of the par each one of the parallel rotations is reduced to exactly one parallel Z element. So the parallel matrices can be encoded using two bits. So here we will use uh, this encoding. And by using this encoding, we can encode a sequence of parallel products into a matrix of size 2m times m, where m is the number of parallel products. And the upper part of our matrix will correspond to the first bit of our encoding, and the lower part of the matrix will correspond to the second bit of our encoding. So here, for, for example, the first poly rotation is y, z, y. So because we have a y on the first qubit, we will put a 1 on the first colon on the first row of, of the matrix. And we also put a 1 on the first row of the lower part of the matrix. Then we have a z on the second qubit. So we put a 1 on the second row. And we put a 0 on the second row of the lower part of the matrix. And then we have a y again, so it will be a 1 and a 1. And we do that for all the parallel rotations of our sequence. And we obtain our encoding of the sequence of parallel rotations. And then we can perform some operations on this sequence of parallel rotations by conjugating it with some, with some Clifford gates. So for example, here we can conjugate this sequence of parallel rotations with a C not gate between the first and the second qubit. And then we can update our matrix by taking the second row of the upper part of the matrix of the matrix and adding it to the first row of the upper part of the matrix. And for the lower part of the matrix, we do the inverse operation, which is taking the first row of the of the matrix and adding it to the second row of the matrix. For the S gate, we simply take the row of the lower part of the matrix and we add it to the row of the upper part of the matrix. And for the Hadama gate, we simply swap the, the two rows. So a parallel rotation is said to be diagonal if all its elements are parallel Z matrices. And a parallel rotation which is diagonal can be implementing uh, implemented using only C node gates. So for example, here in this circuit, all the parallel rotations are diagonal. So what we can do is insert only C node gates in the circuit to finish the implementations of our sequence of parallel rotations. And a circuit in, in which all the parallel rotations are diagonal is called a diagonization network. So here, for example, if we want to construct a diagonalization network for this sequence of parallel rotations, then we insert some Clifford gates in the circuit so that each parallel rotation is, is diagonal. And once we have a diagonalization network, then we don't need to insert any other Hadama gate to finish the implementation of our sequence of parallel rotations. So the goal is to construct a, a diagonalization network with a minimal number of Hadama gates. And so here is the plan. First, I will present an algorithm to construct a diagonalization network for a given sequence of parallel rotations. Then we will see that this algorithm is optimal in the case where all the parallel rotations are mutually commuting. And for this simple case, I will even show the proof. Then we will see how this result can be extended in, for the case where some parallel rotations are anti-commuting. And this is optimal for the number of Hadama gates. But we will see that this algorithm can also be used to get an optimal number of internal Hadama gates, which is the number of Hadama gates that are in between the first and the last non clifford gates of the circuit. And finally, we will see how we can implement a Clifford operator with an optimal number of Hadama gates. And all of these results are based on the same very simple algorithm that I will uh, present now. So the algorithm takes as input a sequence of Pauli rotations. And it will iterate th through all the Pauli rotations. And if the Pauli rotation is not diagonal, 
then it would diagonalize it using only one Hadamard gate, and it would go on to the next Pauli rotation. So here, for example, the first Pauli rotation is not diagonal. So first, what you can do is insert some C0 gates in the circuit so that the first colon of the lower part of the matrix is as a Hamming weight which is equal to one. And then we can apply a Hadamard gate here on the first qubit, and it will diagonalize over Pauli rotation. Then we remove the Pauli rotation from the matrix, and we go on to the next Pauli rotation. So the second Pauli rotation is also not diagonal. So this time, we insert a synod gate between the first and the last qubit of the circuit. And then this time we have a Y and not an X on the first qubit. So we need to insert an S gate before inserting the Hadama gate. And this will diagonalize our Pauli rotation. And when we go on to the, to the last Pauli rotation, it is already diagonal, so we don't need to, to do anything. We can just remove the Pauli rotation for the matrix. And then the matrix is empty, so we are done and we obtain uh, a diagonalization network for our sequence of Pauli rotations. And so what is interesting about this algorithm is that we are constructing locally optimal solutions, and yet we will see that these locally optimal solutions are forming a, a, optimally, a globally optimal solution uh, to our problem. So first, we can show that this algorithm is optimal for the case where all the Pauli rotations are mutually commuting. So here, for this sequence of Pauli rotations, we can see that they are all co commuting with each other. And we just executed this alg the algorithm on this sequence, and we obtained this diagonalization network. So what we can show is that to solve this problem, we need at least one of x Hadama gates where x is the lower part of our matrix. And this can be proven by the following three points. So first, we can notice that the only gate that can lower by at most one the rank of x is the Hadama gate. And also, if a Clifford circuit C is an optimal solution to our problem, then all the Pauli rotations are diagonalized by C. And if all the Pauli rotations are diagonalized, then it means that the rank of x must be equal to zero. So the rank of x must be equal to zero at the end, and, and the only way to lower the rank of x by one is by applying Hadamard gates. So we will need at least rank of x Hadamard gates to solve this problem. Then what we can show is that our algorithm creates, constructs a circuit in which the number of Hadama gates is exactly equal to the rank of the matrix X. And this is optimal because we just saw that we need at least rank of X Hadama gates to solve this problem. So for example, here, for this sequence of Pauli rotations, we can, we can check that the rank of X is equal to two. And, to, and so that's why we have two Hadama gates in the circuit. All right, so this was for the simple case where all the Pauli rotations are mutually commuting. But now, for the more general case, we can have some Pauli rotations which, which are anti-commuting. And so this is a diagonalization network synthesis problem. And to solve this problem, first we define what we call the commutativity matrix, which is a strictly upper triangular Boolean matrix of size m times m, where m is the number of Pauli rotations. And aij will be equal to zero if the Pauli rotation encoded by the column number i is commuting with the Pauli rotation encoding with the column number j. And otherwise, the two Pauli rotations are anti-commuting, and so aij will be equal to one. So here, for example, the first Pauli rotation is anti-commuting with the second Pauli rotation. So we put a one on the, on the second entry of the first row. It is also anti-commuting with the third Pauli rotation. So we put a one on the third colon 
and the first row of the matrix. And the first party rotation is commuting with the last party rotation, so we put a zero on the last entry of the first row. And we do that for all the pairs of our sequence of party rotations to construct the commutativity matrix. And then what we can show is that the algorithm that we saw earlier is actually solving this problem optimally. And moreover, what we can prove is that the number of Hadamard gates in the circuit will be exactly equal to the rank of the matrix, of the matrix X concatenated with the matrix A. So here, for example, the rank of the matrix X concatenated with the matrix A is equal to two. And so when we execute our algorithm on this sequence of parallel rotations, then we obtain a circuit which will contain exactly two Hadamard gates. So at the beginning, we saw that it is useful to optimize the number of internal Hadamard gates, where a Hadamard gate is said to be internal if it is between the first and the last non Clifford gate of the circuit. And so to solve this problem, what we need to do is find some Clifford operator that we put at the beginning of our circuit to minimize the rank of the matrix X concatenated with the matrix A. So for example, if we execute our diagonalization network synthesis algorithm on this sequence of Pauli rotations, then we would get two internal Hadamard gates. But if we put this little Clifford circuit at the beginning of the circuit, then it would change our sequence of Pauli rotations. And this time, the rank of the, matrix, of the matrix X concatenated with A will be equal to one. So we would have only one internal Hadamard gate. And this is optimal because the rank of A is equal to one. And we cannot change the rank of the matrix A. And so what we found out is that if we, take the, if we execute our algorithm on the reversed sequence of party rotations, then the Clifford operator that we get is exactly the Clifford operator that we want to put at the beginning of our circuit to minimize the rank of the matrix. So for example, let's say that we want to implement this sequence of party rotations with an optimal number of internal Hadamard gates. That then what we do first is we take the reverse sequence of party rotations and we execute the, the diagonalization network synthesis algorithm on this reverse sequence of Pauli rotations. Then we remove all the Pauli rotations from the, from the circuit, and we get this Clifford circuit that we put at the beginning of the circuit. And then we execute a second time our diagonalization network synthesis algorithm on this updated sequence of Pauli rotations. And what we get is a diagonalization network with an optimal number of internal Hadamard gates. And moreover, what we can prove is that the number of internal Hadamard gates in the circuit will always be equal to the rank of the matrix A, which is the commutativity matrix. And so here we have a diagonalization network with an optimal number of internal Hadamard gates. But we can see that the number of Hadamard gates in the circuit is not optimal, because here the first Clifford operator is not implemented with an optimal number of Hadamard gates. This can be seen on the first qubit, which has two adjacent Hadamard gates. So if we want both an optimal number of internal Hadamard gates and an op optimal number of Hadamard gates, what we can do is we can use an algorithm that can implement a Clifford operator with an optimal number of Hadamard gates. And actually, we can also do that with our algorithm. Because a Clifford operator can be represented by a, by a set of Pauli operators. And there is a subset of these Pauli operators which are called the stabilizer generators. And we can show that if all the stabilizer generators are diagonal, then we can implement the Clifford operator without using any Hadamard gates. So 
So what we can do is take these stabilizer generators and put them after our sequence of party rotations. Then we execute our algorithm on this updated sequence of party products. And what we get is a circuit which, con which contains an optimal number of internal Hadama gates and an optimal number of Hadama gates. And our algorithm has a complexity of big O of nm plus n square h, where n is the number of qubits, m is the number of gates in the initial circuit, and h is the optimal number of Hadama gates. All right, so we solve the problem of Hadama gates minimization for a fixed sequence of Pauli rotations. But maybe there, is, there exists another sequence of Pauli rotations, which is different but equivalent, and which can be implemented with fewer Hadama gates. So for example, what we can do is take two identical pi over four Pauli rotations, and if we merge them, then we get a Clifford Pauli rotation. So, yeah, I'm al almost done, just one minute. And so the simplest example is that if we take two T gates, then we get an S gate, which is a, a Clifford gate. And so for example, in this sequence of Pauli rotations, the two Pauli rotations in the middle are, are, not, are antarctical. And so we can merge them and we get this Clifford circuit that we can propagate to the end of the circuit. And this will change our sequence of Pauli rotations. And if we execute our algorithm on the first sequence of Pauli rotations, then we will get at least one internal Hadama gate. But if we execute it on the, on the last sequence of Pauli rotation, then we will get zero internal Hadama gates because the two Pauli rotations are commuting. And so this is only one way of modifying the sequence of party rotations. And an open problem is to find an equivalent sequence of party rotations such that the rank of the matrix A is minimized. And if we can solve this problem, then we could use our algorithm to implement a unitary gate with an optimal number of Hadama gates. All right, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Vivian, for uh, your uh, very interesting talk. Uh, are there questions? Hi, uh, thanks for a cool talk. It was very nice. Um, your talk really strongly reminded me. There's a paper f uh, by Sergei Bravi and one of his collaborators from two or three years ago where they essentially factorized the Clifford group into Hadamards and everything that doesn't have Hadamards. Does, do you know their work? Does it have any impact on what you're doing? It seems like it could be related. Uh, I'm not sure I know that work. Do you talk, are you talking about the, the paper where they show a normal form for Clifford circuits and where they have only one layer of, of Hadama gates? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I haven't read this paper in a while, but yeah, that sounds about Yeah, right. yeah, so I know this paper, actually. Okay. And in the paper, they show that you can implement a Clifford operator with an optimal number of Hadama gates. Yes. Because they are grouping all the Hadama gates in the same layer. Mm -hmm. And so our work is more general. Like it's for implementing a given sequence of party rotations with an optimal number of Hadama gates. I see. So what I showed uh, at the end is that we can also use this algorithm to implement a Clifford operator with an optimal number of Hadama gates. Mm -hmm. But this has already been done in the paper that I see, you are I see. talking about. Yeah. But in their paper, they are grouping all the Hadama gates into a single layer. Yes. But here, we have a more general approach to, to implement a Clifford operator with an optimal number of, of Hadama gates. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Other questions from the audience? Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, this is a much more high-level question by comparison, but the goal of your algorithm hinges on like 
very, very far-term assumptions, right? Like minimizing the number of Hadamard gates in a circuit is very specific and only makes sense if you really have fault-tolerant quantum computers where the T gates are a bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Do you think that a similar project would work for other gate sets and other assumptions? Because until we have fault tolerance, you are going to make the circuits much more difficult to implement, actually. Yes, of course. So, yeah, this work is mostly motivated for fault tolerant quantum computing. And so this works not, not only for T gates, but for any Clifford plus RZ secret. And so another motivation can be to parallelize a given quantum circuit. Because if you have fewer Hadamard gates, then you can use this gadgetization procedure. And then you can parallelize your quantum circuit better. So this could be another uh, application. But apart from that, I think this is more for fault tolerant quantum computing. Yes. Thanks, Mayor, for the talk. It was really good. Have you looked into ZX calculus at all for using? <clears throat> I think it'd be very helpful for a lot of the um, kind of calculations you're doing. Have you looked into it for applications in this paper or? Uh, yes, but what do you want to use ZX calculus for exactly in this work? It just seems like very handy formalism. And okay. my follow-up was going to be, uh, what would a circuit look like, a di fully diagonalized circuit in ZX calculus? Oh. Would that be all? Yeah, so actually we can also write this uh, Clifford, uh, this uh, Pauli rotations in ZX calculus. There are a lot of papers that are doing it. And yeah, if they are all diagonal, then it means that we have only Z in the, in the box here. Yeah, so I imagine that would so, be very easy to simplify then if it was all. Yes, so we get a nice representation in ZX calculus, yes. But it's just a different representation. It's it's not better or worse. Yeah. All right, fair enough, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, maybe I can also sneak in a question. Yes. So uh, you targeted the Adamar gate as the costly gate, but yeah. uh, also in terms of indeed noise, uh, et cetera. Uh, sometimes there is like a generating gate, which is the most noisy, so that experimentalists want to avoid. Is maybe, indeed, would be, um, uh, possible to transfer this, this analysis to at least other generators of the Clifford in order to reduce that, the most noisy gate, for instance, and so that it doesn't appear so, so often in the circuit. So this work is only for optimizing the number of Hadamard gates. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this can increase the uh, synod gates, for example. So if we want to still have an optimal number of Hadamard gates, but also optimize the other Clifford gates, like the synod gate. Uh, what you can do is, once our algorithm has been executed, we can apply some other synod count optimizers on some, on, on some part of the circuit to optimize the number of synod gates, for example. And so that, does that answer your question? Or? Yeah, so how much your analysis can be transferred somehow, or how much is tied to the other matter? So that's, this is somehow uh, another way to pose the question, but uh, yeah, indeed, it seems this was answered. Okay, yes, because I don't think this is, again, this is more for fault tolerant quantum computing. Mm -hmm. So if you want to optimize the, generally for NICs, for example, you don't want to optimize the number of Hadamard gates. You will more likely want to optimize the number of synod gates. And this work is not so good for optimizing the number of synod gates, for example, yes. But if you, the, the main motivation is to optimize the number of T gates. And if you perform a, some T count optimizer after, the number of synod gates will increase anyway. So uh, if you are optimizing the number of T gates, I think it's better to always optimize the number of Hadamard gates before, yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank I you. think now uh, we don't have additional time for additional questions, but we can of course continue during the break. But let us thank Vivien once, uh, once again. Thank you.